All right, morning again, students. So as I said, we are finishing up, finishing off the coordinate geometry. I was starting a new topic, which is inequalities and linear inequalities and linear programming in particular. So our aim really is to cover the topic of linear programming, but we have to go to linear inequalities to do that. And before we were able to get to linear inequalities, we, are, we had to understand coordinate geometry because we have to apply the knowledge that we gain from coordinate geometry in linear programming. Because we deal with lines and regions above lines and below lines and, and stuff, intersection of lines and all these things. So we have to understand that first. We have to be able to draw lines in linear programming, right, on graphs. All right, so this question over here was the... This question over here was the 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 the, the classwork, right? Um, so as I said, only a few persons actually sent me solutions, and I'm certain that they are they are better off by virtue of them sending me the solution and and having got my response, right? Um, persons who did not do the work, I don't know. Chances are you're right back where you were last week, not knowing anything about quantum geometry, not know how not knowing how to deal with these things. Whereas maybe if you are just do something, do what you think you're supposed to do, send it to me, then I would see what you're misunderstanding and help you to clarify it, right? That's how it goes. You do the work, send it to me, I look at it and by my looking at it, I will know, oh, okay, this person misunderstand this and I, then I can know how to explain it to you individually, all right? But if you don't do anything, then I can't help you. So it means that maybe you don't know nothing in this topic, and you still don't know nothing in this topic because you don't get the help that you need. So each person sometimes needs specific help, you know. That's why, that's why I try to have a look at one and one. So I look at each person work and I deal with them individually. Because each person who send me they make a different mistake because they have a different misunderstanding. And I look at each person individually. Also, the more persons who send me work, the more things I am able to explain now when I'm going through the, through the, through the, um, through the, this is somebody who did not do the work, they will so understand and I don't get a chance to address it. Whereas if you had sent me the work and I said that you don't understand it, then I will remember to address it today for the benefit of the entire class. Right, so it's just a lose lose when you don't do the work. Lose, 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 lose for the overall class. Right, so you need to do the work, find some time to do the work. I'm not giving you 10 and 20 questions, you know, because one time, I mean, have a number of parts are related. And right? so just find some time and do the work. Right, persons do the work, send it to me. I give them back, they correct it and send it to me again. So some persons are able to do the work two and three times. Right? The same question. I don't know if you don't do it even one time. It don't make any sense. It don't make any sense. You cannot gain success in maths unless you actually do work. Right? You cannot, you cannot just read mathematics and learn it. You cannot watch video on mathematics and learn it. You cannot listen to a teacher explain, no matter how good the teacher explains something. And you can learn it properly. If you're going to learn mathematics properly, you have to put pen to paper. I put pencil to paper and do the questions yourself. No matter how well I explain it, I know I'm very good at explaining. But you still have to go and do it yourself. That is how you cement it in your own brain when you actually do the work yourself. That is how it resides in your memory. In a place that they call it cerebral cortex of your brain, it stays in there forever. When you actually do it, do it, do the work. You cannot watch video and learn. You cannot just listen to me and learn. You cannot read mathematics and learn. Mathematics is one of those subjects. You have to actually do the questions to cement the coming brain. And when you get to that level, you know, when you get it to that level, you, know, you don't have to relearn it. You just need a little bit of revision. Maybe when I start to revise these things um, in December, in January when I, and, and leading down to the exam. You know, just quick, quick, quick like that to get it back again because it's there. 
You have a, you have a level of understanding that allows you to, to remember the content quickly and easily. You just need to, it's like riding a bicycle. You want to ride a bicycle, you don't ride a bicycle for many years, you jump on a bicycle and you start riding, your body just remember. And you're gone. Just like that. Same with the maths. But to get to that level, you have to actually work questions. Work questions. And I always tell students, you know, the same examples that I do in the class. For example, today, you know, the topic that we're doing, if I do an example in the class, those, that's the first thing you do. You go home or you're at home, you, after the class, you redo the very same examples that I do in the class. Do those first. Do those first, because those are the ones that are fresh in your mind. Right? You do those first. The same examples that I did. You do those first. And then after you do those, and you feel comfortable with those, then you go and you try other ones for yourself. And if, if you have to do a question three, four, five times, you feel comfortable that, you know, you can actually, actually flow through the solution of the question without stopping and looking back at something and erasing and making a mistake here and there. That's not really doing it. We do a question is when you actually just work it straight from begin to end without having to pause and look back at something and erase something and make a mistake and start over. That's what I mean. So if you have to do the question three, four, five times until you can do it that way, flow smoothly through the question, that is when you know that you have conquered that question and you can move on to another one. You have to be prepared to do the work. Some students only need to do it once. Some students need to do it twice. Some students need to do it five times. You just have to face your own reality and just do what you have to do. Right? When I was in school, I used to have to do them five times. I'm not ashamed to say that. I used to have to do the math question five times to be satisfied in my mind that I understand this thing. And that's what I used to do with all subjects. Do the question five, six times. But like I can flow through the question without stopping and looking back at anything. When I'm done, I know that, yes, I have that one now, that one lock in my brain and not coming out again. And any question like that I get again, I know I can do it. And it, it enhances your understanding. You understand the thing better. That means, I mean, if you get a question on it and it changes up a little bit because of your high level of understanding and you have no mastered that topic, right? No matter how the strict question, your level of understanding allows you to do it. So you have to aim to attain what we call mastery in the subject. Mastery is when you can see a question and you know what to do. You thinking. You just know what to do. You master it. You're doing a question, you have to stop and think and wonder and guess and scan and trial and error. You're not you're doing the question. All right? So that comes through practice, guys. And I don't have to start every class to see me talking about what you need to practice. So this week, when we get the classwork, I want to see the solutions coming through fast and furious from everybody. I want to see you sending me the solutions a lot. I want to see them coming through. I don't care if they're right or they're wrong. That is, not, that is irrelevant at this stage. If you send the wrong thing, it tells me that's what it tells me what I need to do to help you. If it's in the right thing, same thing. Let me know that, okay, this person is fine. So I don't care if it's right or it's wrong. That is irrelevant. Just send what you think you are supposed to do. That is all you need to do. Do what you think you're supposed to do and send it to me. And that will, help, that will give me information. And let me know what I need to do to help you. All right, enough on that. All right, so this question now, the corner geometry question, and I basically set up this question to um, it kind of involve all the possible things that they could ask you. There, there are other things that they can ask you, but this, like, this question like cover all, almost everything that they could ever ask you in a corner geometry question, for the most part, right? Only a few other things not there, but if you can, if you can actually understand and do this question, then you should be able to do any corner geometry question at the season. At the CSEC level. There are some more in current German questions at the higher level, but I'm talking about at the CSEC level. All right, so this question gave us two points A and B. And I like to, when you're doing current German, you like to reference everything, right? Put, put down everything so you don't mix up points. 
So you don't use point B for point A. I don't use a gradient of a parallel line for the gradient of a perpendicular. I don't mix them up. So you always try to have some way of, of referen referring to each thing that you're using. All right? So, 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 so the points that they gave us in this question are A, so I'm going to make, make sure that I don't mix up the A and the B by writing it like this. A is a point minus one, five. So I can mix up A and B. And B is a point, B is a point, five, negative seven. So there's no way I can mix them up. I'll put the A in front of the negative one, five, and I'll put the B in front of the, the five, negative seven. The first part wants us to calculate the length of the line, AB. Simple. This is a formula, length of line formula. Remember, it comes from Pythagoras' theorem. So the length AB Remember, it's now equal to the square root. And let's re remind ourselves of the formula. The difference in the x values squared plus the difference in the y values squared. That's how we get the, the length of the line. I'll explain all of that in the first class. I'm not going to go through explaining why that is a formula anymore. Right? We're just going to use it now and do it. All right, so so that equals square root. Now, what are the, what are the two x values that I'm taking the difference of? You have to be careful now. And this one minus this one, difference of those two values. All right, so it's five minus a negative one. And you have to be careful that this has a negative on it. All right, so it's five minus negative one, so let's write that. Five minus negative one squared. If it's a negative one minus five, no matter, same difference, same thing. Plus, I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna do the difference in the y values. So it's this y value minus this y value. All right, so those are the two y values I'm subtracting now. We're going step by step in because there are some persons who weren't here when we started this topic. So it's minus seven, minus five. And don't forget to put the square. That's it. Then that number becomes equal to the square root of now the minus minus here becomes a plus. So this is, that, that is like five plus one. So let me put a little small plus in red so we can see it. Put a plus right there. So minus minus means plus. And so we are actually doing six squared plus. And then the minus seven and the minus five is negative 12. Or well, you're squaring the entire negative 12. So you have to put brackets around. All right. So what happens is that this becomes the square root of 36 and then the negative 12 squared is 144. So it becomes the square root of 180. And because the answer is not exact, I can leave that. I remember length in coordinate geometry is measured in units. I have to write the word units. If you, some person wrote this out and put 13 point something, I think it was, but it, it, no, it, it don't matter. You put the 13 point, whatever, I just leave it like that, no problem. So that is the answer right there for the first one. So this is the answer. I'm gonna work with that one, that's the answer. I think almost everybody who said no work that one, got that one right. That one was pretty straightforward. All right, then we'll come to part B. Come to part B. So B you now, Wanted the midpoint. Remember, I told you that midpoint is like an average point. You treat midpoint as like an average point. You treat it like an average. So you can't, you can't go wrong if you treat it like an average. So the midpoint. Let's rewrite the formula for midpoint. Let's call it capital M. They didn't give us a name, but we're going to call it M. And the coordinates will be the average of the x values and the average. Of y values. All right. So to get the midpoint, we're averaging these two x values here. 
And then we'll be averaging these two Y values here. All right, so, and show your working out, show your working. Don't just write down what the answer is, show the working. All right, so, so then this becomes M and the two X values are minus one and five. And you add them and divide by two. And the two Y values are five and negative seven. And I can put plus negative seven in. To put plus negative seven really is just same as to write minus seven. Minus two. This is really four, as five minus one is four. Four divided by two is two. So that becomes two. And this is really negative two. Five minus seven is negative two. Negative two divided by the two is negative one. All right, so I can put those in the red, but they work out. So up here really works out of four, and up here really works out of negative two. All right, and, here, and so that is the answer right here now. This right here now is your answer. For the second part. All right, nice and easy. And then the third part now, part C wanted the gradient. Remember, the gradient now is a slope. And when you have two points, this one the next page, so part C. I'm going to write the two points again. So we can have it on the page. So it's negative one, five. And B, you remember now, it was five, negative seven. Five, negative seven. And for the purpose of the class, I'm just going to work it out the two ways and show you, right? The two, two, the two ways. I remember is one point minus another point or, the, or, or vice versa. Remember now, gradient, I write gradient like this now. Small m for gradient. Because I'm doing A, B, I'm going to write a small A, B here. So I don't mix it up. We're going to find gradient of other lines down the line. And we don't want to mix them up. So I write gradient of A, B. I remember, gradient of A, B equals difference. It equals rise over run. Let's write that first. It equals rise. Rise. Over run. From one point on the, on the line to another point. So it's rise or run from here to here, or from here to there. Either way. All right. And the rise of a run really now is the difference in the y values is a rise. Difference in the y values is a rise over difference in the x values is a run. And I say one common mistake is for persons to put the difference in the y values and x values up here. It's a common mistake, and I think a couple of persons made that mistake, which is understandable because the first time you're doing one. But just remember that you don't make that mistake again, right? Because I spoke about it in the class last week. That is the common mistake. People tend to put the difference in the X values on the numerator sometimes, which is wrong. It is a difference in the Y values that must go on the numerator. All right? All right, good. So let's go. So. That then becomes equal to now. Let's see so what we're subtracting. Now let's say I'm doing, let's say I'm doing, um, let's say I'm doing this point minus this point. I have to decide on the direction, you know. Let's say I'm doing the B point minus the A point. Then I do the difference in the Y first. It's this Y value minus this Y value. Give me my difference in Y. So it's a negative seven minus the five. Negative seven minus five. All right, so it becomes negative seven minus five. That's the difference in the y values divided by. Then because I did, I'm doing b point minus a point. Then I have to go back now for the difference in x. And I have to use this x value minus this x value. I have to go that same direction. All right, when you're doing gradient, I've got the same direction. I'll explain all of that in the last class. And right, so we'll have to go over that fully again. So that becomes five minus, note that this X value really is a negative one. So it becomes five minus negative one. All right, and so the gradient of AB works down to be the negative five and the negative, the negative seven and the negative five there, it's negative 12. This minus minus becomes a plus. So that's really five plus one, which then is six. And then the negative 12 divided by six is actually now equal to negative two. And that's it, negative two. All right, 
or I could have gone the other way. So I'm not saying that you must do it both ways. You know? I'm just showing you that if you had gone the other way, we get the same answer. So let me put the one in red for the direction that we got. So this one is where we get go in the direction of the red, which is an answer. If I'm going to put a blue marker now and show the direction, if we're going blue. So if I got this point, if I got this point, minus this point instead, going up, up, other way. Right? And let me do that one in blue. Then the gradient of AB, the gradient of AB would still be difference in Y over difference in X. But this time it will be this Y value minus this Y value. I'm doing the A point minus the B point now, right? So it will be five minus, five minus, and this Y value is it's actually a negative seven. So it's negative seven divided by, and again, I'm going from this point to this point. So I have to go no difference in the X values. So it's this X value minus this X value now, all right? So it's negative one minus five. So it will be negative one minus five. And that's gonna work out to the same gradient of negative two. Now look, got a minus minus here becomes a plus. So that's actually five plus seven is 12. And then this minus one and minus five, minus one and then minus five is minus six. And then 12 divided by negative six is still equal to negative two. Same negative two that we got there. So it doesn't matter the direction you go once you remain consistent. The direction you go for the difference in Y, the same direction you must go for the difference in X. And so the gradient of AD is negative two, all right? So we know that. So that's the answer there. It's negative two, all right? So that's the answer right there. Gradient of AB is negative two. And then part D now, naturally, is asking us for the equation now. Part D is asking us for the equation. And again, we have two options. Remember, to find the equation, you need a gradient and a point. So we'll find an equation of AB, equation of AB. To find the equation of AB, you need to know two things about AB. You need a gradient, which we know. So the gradient of AB, we know is negative two. And we have two points. We can either use a point A or we can use a point B. So we can use a point A, which is minus one, five, Let's do it another way over here. Same equation of AB. In both ways. So some person might have used the A, some person might have used the B. I'm going to show you that the answer is going to be the same. Same gradient of AB, equation of AB, sorry. You need a gradient and a point. So this time the gradient is still negative two. But this time, no, but this time I'm going to use a point B. Five. Negative seven, just to show that the answer will be the same. All right, so I'm gonna do it two ways. One way, I'm gonna use the point A with the gradient. Other way, I'm gonna use the point B with the gradient. To find the equation, you have to have two things, the gradient and a point. Gradient and a point. So they're good, you can find it there, so. Gradient and a point. So you're good, you can find it there, so. All right, let's do it over here. So we're doing it over here because at point A, the equation is the BFF formula now. Y minus YA, equals the gradient of AB into X minus XA. That's on this side. I'll just finish it on the left side and work it out. All right? So remember, these, they don't trouble these. And those represent your general point. X and the Y are coming back in the equation as your general point. Remember, I would derive the formula. So it's going to be Y minus YA. YA. YA is a Y value at the point A right here. That's y a now, five. All right, so that is y minus five equals the gradient is this same gradient here, so negative two, bracket x. Remember, this x don't change. x minus, and then this x a now is actually negative one. So I put minus negative one, see there, negative one. So the minus minus you're gonna become a plus. 
So let's write it like that first. So it becomes y minus five equals minus two bracket x plus one. And then I can expand this out. So I get y minus five equals minus two x minus two is minus two times this. And then minus two times the positive one give me negative two. They want to leave it in the form y equals mx plus c. So they want the y alone to be the subject. So I'm going to transpose this five over here. I'm going to become positive five. And then positive five minus two is going to become three. So I know that. So let me erase those now. So I'm going to get a three over there when I move the five. So y equals minus two x plus three. So you see this. It is now in the form y equals mx plus c. y equals mx plus c. So the c value is 3, which is your y axis intercept. All right. So as you know, started with this, still got it down to the form y equals mx plus c. All right. So that is it. Some persons who did the work actually use the y equals mx plus c formula. Calculate the C value, but I'm not, I'm not going to get into that because I don't teach it that way. But I still, it's still correct, it's still correct. So, nothing wrong with that. Once you get it correct, that's fine. Yes, yes. Somebody said they got lost in the calculator. They got lost in the what? Somebody in the chat said they got lost there. They might have got I'm lost. Sorry, sorry, so we can use y equals mx plus b. Y equals mx plus c, which some people did. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with using y equals mx plus c. But this is a method I use in my class. But if you use y equals mx plus c, I use y equals mx plus c when you know the m and the c. So there's no problem if you use y equals mx plus c. All you know that the c is going to come out to be 3. Just the same. So if you do it that way and get the c equals 3, that's fine. All right? And each person have a talk for the server. I cannot watch the chat. I cannot, I cannot be teaching and watching the chat. So trust me, I'm not going to see any chat anybody post. So don't make sense to put any chat, put up any chat. I'm not going to see the chat. All right? Anyway, so let's continue. All right, so let me do it over here now with the B. So maybe somebody got lost because they don't know this formula. They, everybody know Y equals MX plus C, but E Y MX plus C. Exactly, that's the point. So if you do it with the y equals mx plus c and get the c equals three, no problem. That's what I was saying to you. And I said it last week in the class. But most, most schools and most teachers teach this with y equals mx plus c. So if you do it, see, I get the same three right here. Right? And I'm not even gonna go, go into it. Oh, you get it. I'm, I, Cause I want to become comfortable with this, this method. All right, so let's go. All right, so I'm using the point B now. So if I'm using the point B, then my equation is gonna become Y minus YB equals the gradient of AB into X minus XB. This is just another way to write the equation of a line when you know a point and a gradient. So we explained last week. All right, we're using the gradient and the point B now. So it's gonna become Y minus YB is negative seven, see there? So it's Y minus negative seven equals the gradient is still negative two bracket x minus xb xb is five see there xb is five x bar b is five all right then this minus minus is a plus so this is y plus y plus seven equals i'm gonna expand this now i'm gonna get minus two x plus 10 the minus 2 times the minus 5 give me positive 10 all right minus minus is a plus then this 7 gonna go over here i'm gonna come negative 7 so i'm gonna get 10 minus 7 is 3 so you see getting the same thing so i'm gonna get y equals minus 2x plus 3 which is the same thing right here this and this is the same thing all right, which is still in the form y equals mx plus c. All right. Um, I'm not even going to go into how oh, oh, some people calculate it. I don't want to, I don't want to confuse people who learned who learned it from me first. All right. 
All you know, when you have a gradient and a point, you can use this formula to do it. When you have the y-axis intercept, that's when I use y axis and cross c. All right, because then you would know the m and the c. All right, so that is the answer. In any case, this is the answer. Any way you want to do it, this is the answer. If you want to use y equals mx plus c and do it, no problem. That's the answer. You get the c equals three, and then that will be the equation of the line anyway. All right, so that is the equation of the line. Then we come to part E. All right, so part E. Part E says write down, so you don't need to calculate anything. No. Write down coordinates of the intercept of the line AB. Now remember the line AB, you know. Y equals mass 2x plus 3. So the M on this line is negative 2 and the C is 3. C is this 3. Right? The Y axis intercept. Is a point 0, C. Always 0, C. That is the point. Zero, three. What does that mean? Zero C. The point, the y-axis intercept is a point on the y-axis here where the line AB crosses the y-axis right there. At that point on the y-axis, because on the y-axis the x value is equal to zero. That's how we get the zero right here as the x value. And then now because the equation is in the form y equals mx plus c, if you put zero here for the x. Then this part is going to become zero and the y is going to be equal to three. So at that point where x equals zero, y equals three. And so the point is zero, three. But I mean, when the, when the equation form y equals mx plus c, there's no need to go through all this calculation. I'm just showing you the explanation now, once and for all, as to why it is zero c, zero and the c value, right? That is basically it. All right? So that is basically it. And that is it. So in any case, this is an answer. Coordinates of the y-axis intercept, zero C. And some persons go and just write three for the y-axis intercept. No, the question said coordinates. The question said coordinates, see there? Coordinates. Coordinates is a X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So I have to give both of them, all right? Pay attention to the details, everything important. All right, so that is that. All right, so this down here is just a little explanation as to why it is zero C. Because on the y axis, on the y axis, x value is always equal to zero. If you put zero in the equation right here, this value is going to become zero. And so the y is going to be equal to three. All right, so that is that, the zero C. All right, that is E. Then we'll come to part F. Part F says we have to write down the gradient of lines parallel to AB. Parallel to AB. Just write down the gradient. All right? So, see there? Gradient of AB is equal to negative 2. So, like, like, so parallel lines to AB have the same gradient. The gradient of those parallel lines, I'm putting those that dash to me in parallel so I can differentiate, will be equal to the gradient of AB. Parallel lines have the same gradient, which is negative two. So that's it. Parallel gradient to AB is negative two. Done. Simple. All right. Then part D. G. The one perpendicular. Lines to AB, I don't want to do it. It's a gradient. Gradient, not slope. Gradient of those parallel lines will be negative two. No one perpendicular lines to AB, don't you know? Right? Perpendicular lines to AB. I'm going to use this as my symbol of a perpendicular. So, what is now? Gradient. of those perpendicular line, the perpendicular gradient to AB, I'm gonna represent it like that, perpendicular gradient to AB is equal to minus one over the gradient of AB. 
Now, two ways you can do this. Since the MAB is negative two, you can write this as minus one over minus two. Okay, I put the minus two for this. Right? Or we can do a quick method that we say, which is to flip, flip this and change the sign. Or flip that and change the sign. First of all, we recognize it as minus two over one. When you flip it, it becomes one over minus two. And you change the sign to a positive. And so it becomes a positive half. Anyway, you want to look at it, guys, it's going to be equal to half. All right. So let's say that we'll put it there. So it becomes minus one. It becomes minus one over minus two, which becomes a half. So if you use a flip it and change the sign method, is a half. If you put the minus under there, it's still a half. No matter. All right. So the gradient perpendicular gradient is half. So parallel gradient is minus two. Perpendicular gradient is half. So if you're trying to find a parallel line, you have to use a gradient of minus two. If you're trying to find a perpendicular line to AB, you have to use a gradient of half. All right. So that is G. Moving on now to H. Let's do H under here now. H. Now it says. Determine the equation of a line passing through P. So to give us another point P now, P34, and is parallel to AB. So watch this now. We want a parallel line to AB. Let's write it out. We want a parallel line to AB through P, which is 3, 4. What do we say? If we're trying to find the equation of a line, we need to know two things. We need a gradient and a point. We have the point already. But they help us to find a gradient because they tell us that it is parallel to AB. So what do we know? Well, what, what are we going to use? We're going to use a gradient, which is a parallel gradient, which is we know it's negative 2. And we're going to use a point, which is 3, 4, to get the line, to get the equation. So we need a gradient, which we have the gradient now, and we need a point, which we have the point. And so we need to find the equation, a gradient and a point, a gradient of the line and a point, and again, we have both of them. So the equation, the equation of that line that I want is y minus yp, because it passes through p, equals the parallel gradient, because a parallel line so is a parallel gradient, into x minus xp, because p is a point. Some people use them y equals mx plus t and use these and find them c. No problem. Okay. Make sure you get it right if you do it that way. All right? I'm not telling you that you cannot do it that way. Do it that way if you're comfortable. Just make sure you get it right. And then this becomes y minus yp. yp is 4. y minus 4. Equals the gradient is negative 2. Parallel gradient is negative 2. Into x minus xp. xp is 3. x value of p is 3. And then I'm going to expand this. Careful with the negative, negative here. All right. So you get y minus 4 equals minus 2x plus 6. And then this negative 4 is going to come over here and become positive 4. Positive 4. This at this time, I'm, a 10. I'm going to get a 10 over there and transpose the force. I was working that out fast. So the y becomes minus 2x plus 10. This is my answer. And right off the bat, I realized that this line, this line actually cut the y-axis at 0, 10. So if I draw this line, it must cut the y-axis at 0, 10. The c value is 10. So this line, this line cut the y-axis at zero, 10. That's my y-axis intercept. So when I draw that line, it must have a gradient of negative two. I must run parallel to AB, and it must cut the y-axis at 10. So I was making a little note of that. In fact, let me take this out and put it in red. This is just a little note. This is just a little note to self. This is just a note. This is just a little note. That it passes through zero 10. 
right? So we can note to self, all right? So when I draw that line, it must pass through zero, 10, because the C value is 10, see? The gradient is negative two, and the C value is 10 on that line, the parallel line. I can to self. All right, so that is H. That's a parallel line. The next part now, part I is asking us to determine the equation now of the line which passes to another point Q, see there? But this time it's perpendicular. So it means that we have to use the perpendicular gradient for that line to pass through the point Q. Let's make a note of it now. Next part up here. So this now is part, this now is part, um, part I, part I. Part I wants to find the perpendicular, the symbol for perpendicular. Perpendicular line to A B through through what? Through Q. And Q is a point negative three, negative two. Negative three, negative two. All right. So remember now, to find the equation of a line, you have to know two things about the line. We need a gradient and a point. They didn't give us a gradient straight, but they tell us that it's perpendicular to a line that we have already, perpendicular to AB. So we have to use the perpendicular gradient that we have. We work it out already. We have to work it again. It was a half. It's up here. Perpendicular gradient. It's here. Perpendicular line to, to AB of a gradient of half. That's it. We're using the perp since we want a perpendicular line, the gradient is going to be a half. And the point that we're using is a point Q minus three minus two. I'm going to call this point of this minus and it's a little bit careful. Be careful. Whenever I say negatives, you'll be careful. That's where a lot of mistakes are made in it. Right? I mean, so, anyway, that equation of that perpendicular line now. It's going to be y minus y q, q is a point, equals the perpendicular gradient, as a perpendicular line find a perpendicular gradient, into, into x minus x q, q is a point. I'm putting in values now. So it's y minus y q is negative 2. Not 2, you know, negative 2. So it's y minus negative 2. All right? Equal the perpendicular gradient is a half into see the perpendicular gradient right here is a half. I want a perpendicular line into x minus x q now is negative three. So you put negative three. All right, and let's put in a minus minus from now. That's gonna become a plus, that's gonna become a plus. So let's put them in from now. So we're gonna get y plus two equals half into x plus three. Now suppose did this and started to put decimals for the half and so we get comfortable with the fractions. Why do why you need decimal? Why you need the fractions? For the, when you have it in fraction form, you can see what the rise in the run is. When you have the gradient in fraction form, you can see the rise value, you can see the run value as compared when you have it in decimals. So instead of writing 0 0.5 half, so you leave it as one or two, because then you know the rise is two and the run. And the run is the rise is one and the run is two. That's the importance of leaving the even the fractions, guys. Right? So just be that in. So anyway, I'm gonna simplify this now. And I tell you that when you have a fraction like this, to simplify it quickly, all we can do is multiply the two across here by these two and multiply the one inside here by those two. All right. Just to simplify this quickly. All right. So don't not work in the fractions show. We're gonna become two y plus four equals x plus three. And you cover this four and subtract it from the three. And so you get two y equals x, two y equals, I can give them a like that. Equals x gonna become minus one because the three minus four is negative one. And then to leave y alone as a subject, so I can see my m and my c, I'm gonna divide through by two. I'm going to divide through by two. So I'm going to divide this by two, divide this by two, and divide by two. 
or I can say multiply two by half. So that I multiply this by half, multiply this by half, and multiply this by half. Same thing. To divide two is same as to multiply by half. All right. In any case, what will happen? Whichever way you choose to look at it, y is going to become half x minus half. All right. And this now is my perpendicular line. So up here was my parallel line, this one. All right. 2p so only you know is my perpendicular line. Now what are, what are, what can we notice? It is in the form y equals mx plus c. So the y has a subject there. So for this one, the m is a half because it's perpendicular, and the c, the c, the c is actually negative half. The negative half is the c. All right. So this one will cross y axis at zero negative half cut the way at zero negative half because of c and that's why this is our our y y is the subject so this is a gradient this is the m and this is the c plus c all right and the m is supposed to be half, half anyway because that was the perpendicular gradient all right so that's what i have that's what i have for us. so i have the lens i have everything so the last part now just wants me to draw the graph sure. All I'm going to do now, yes? I calculated the torque of the decimal. Ah? Uh? I calculated the torque of the decimal. The answer is to all right. I just, ex I, just ex I just explained about decimal, not listening. I just said some person work it with the decimal. But the advantage of doing it with the fraction, for example, with the gradient of a half, is that you're able to see the rise and the run as compared to if you write it with 0 0.5. That's all I said. So I said, get comfortable working it with the fractions. Get comfortable working with the fraction. And sometimes you have some fractions that are not exact. Like for example, so we're working it and you get a fraction of a third. You're gonna put 0 0.33, 0 point, uh, 0 0.333, but, but one third is not actually equal to 0 0.33. Go on and on and on and on and on repeatedly. So it's always easier to, the fraction is more accurate every time. Because a lot of the times you have to be rounding off when you have a right in decimals. So instead of writing 0 0.33, for example, so put a fraction, so put a grain was a third. Put a grain was a third. All right, so the half easy, you know, the half easy, half is just 0 0.5. But so put a grain was a third. Put 0.33, but well, this is not exactly zero, not exactly a third. So to make it exact, work with the third. Get comfortable with the fractions. These question do this just and not touch no character, you know. Not to decimal come into play, you know. We're smoking with values that are less than 10. Cut it. Values are than 10. Watch what look at the other values less than 10. No calculator no needed for this question. None at all. Anything in this question, standing. You know, in a calculator, even right here, so you know, oh, you know, I'm right right in a calculator. calculator. Because I say you can leave it like that. I'm right in a calculator. Well, anyway, because I have, because I have 0 0.5. But you understand the point, though? Yes, that's the important thing. You understand the point about why I can leave, why I leave it as a fraction yes. rather than put 0 0.5. Because as a fraction, especially with the graded. You able to see what the rise is and what the run is, and, and there's no there's no mistake, all right? Yeah. All right. So the advantage is leaving it as fractions. The other advantage, get comfortable with the fractions, guys. Get comfortable. All right. So we need to draw the graph. Now. All right. So the next part was just to draw the graph. All right. So that's what this part wants now. This part wants us to draw the graph. It says draw the graph showing all all the points and all the lines described above. All the points and all the lines we must show on the graph. So I'm gonna show these two points. I'm gonna show the midpoint. I spoke about the y-axis intercept. I'm show that. We have, to, we have to show the parallel lines, the parallel line and the perpendicular line. I'm gonna show everything that I spoke about. And we have to show these points as well. All the points and all the lines. Everything that I spoke about in this question I want us to show. All right, so. Um, 
So let's try and see if we can wait on that. Um, do, 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 do. Um, let me use some. Let me see. I use something else. Android. Let me see. If we can use something else. Android. This thing. All right. Hold on a second. Let's see. Let me see if something else and draw this thing. Let's go back to that. Put it over here. And all right, let's do this way. Let's do this way. Um, let's give let's give me a second, guys. Let's give me a second. All right. Give me one second. I just want to stop. Let's minimize this. Let's give me a second, all right? Let's set up something. Let's draw the graph over here. All right, good. Okay, yeah, so I'm supposed to be able to work with this thing over here. And I'm gonna draw it to my free hand, so just, just bear with me, okay? I'm gonna draw with my free hand. All right, oh, maybe I should use the black or the blue. Oh, let's use the blue. All right, let me see if I can draw this thing now. So we're putting on everything, right? So the first thing we had were the points. I don't have to go back to the question because the solution is over here. So I'm gonna put on the points first. A and B. So A was let's just do up a little scale. Let's say let's start each line is one. So it's gonna be two, four, six, eight. It's gonna be minus two. Minus four, minus four, minus six, minus eight. And up is going to be two, four, six, eight. It's okay, a bit, and then minus two, minus four, minus six. All right, so we have to use a friend color now. Let's use uh, let's use a block to start. To the block and see how it goes. All right, so the first thing I'm putting on are the points A and A and B. So A was negative one five, which is right here. But I get that. This is the point A right here. A. This point right here. Mute the mic, please. Mute the mic. Then B was five negative seven. So five years so. And then negative seven. Mute your mic, please. Five negative seven. Oh, so five, yes. Yeah. So negative seven gonna be all the way down here. Right here. So that's gonna be the point B. And then the y-axis in the step was at three, right here. Remember? Three. That was the point 
is the same. And then the midpoint M was what? Two negative one. Where is it? See it here. The midpoint M. See it here. Two negative one. Two negative one is right here. That's the midpoint M. So we can write M right here. M. And then now we're gonna draw the straight line through that. Um, so I've been trying to use to draw that line. Let's see. We can draw it through this thing. Let's see if this can work. I'm gonna try to draw the line straight. All right. I'm trying to draw this. Oh, it's doing all kind of things. To get the app that I can use, but let's just draw like this for now. Not working. Right, let's draw it to my friend. Let's draw it to my friend. So it's gonna go like that. That. Uh, so that's A, B. Let's assume there's a straight line, right? And you have to use your ruler and you draw that. So that's a line A, B. All right, I need to get the app that I can use and draw straight lines. It's actually one, but still experimenting with it. All right, so let's set out the line A, B. The next line that they wanted was, was the line through P. All right, I want everybody to pay attention now. So P was a point, where is it? P was the point, da, 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 da. P was a point, parallel line. I noticed this line passed through, right? Which is correct. The wax seems as it was zero at three. All right, so P, you know, P was a line, P was a point, um, well, I erased it. P was a point three, four, let me write it back. Over here, P was a point three four. This is P, all right. And this was zero Q. This was Q. All right, so P is a point three four. Now watch this. I'm gonna draw a parallel line using the point P and the gradient. All right. So we're doing parallel line. So the parallel line. Parallel. Doing the parallel line now. So the parallel line passed to the point P, 3, 4, and it has a gradient of negative 2. Let me write that a little bit now. The gradient, gradient of negative 2. Or well, negative 2 is the same as negative 2 over 1. And negative 2 over 1 is the same as 2 over negative 1. Now, the reason for writing the 2 over negative 1 is that I might need to go draw the line going opposite direction. But the key thing here is to remember that gradient is a way of rising and running from one point to another point. Gradient is a measure of how you rise and run between points on the line. So if I put on a point P first, which is 3, 4, right here, Then I can get to other points. This is the point P. I can get to other points using a gradient. So in the first case, where the gradient, let me do it two ways. So let me write it two ways. So when I use a gradient of just minus two over three, and I use in minus two over three, the rise, the rise is minus two, and the run is one, not two over three, two over one. The run is one. So from the point P to the other points, I'm going to rise negative two, run one. So these are different colors to show the rise and the run now. I'm going to rise negative two, run one. So watch this now. From P, rise negative two means I go down two. So it means that I'm going to come down two, run one. So this is going to be right there. Now. There's a point here in that line. And then from that point, I can rise negative two again, come down to run one, come across one, run one. We are in positive, we go to the right. So it means that there's another point here again. 
on that line, parallel line. And from there, I can continue. I can rise negative two, run one. Rise negative two, run one, right? So, so there's a point here, and I mark them all when I'm finished. There's a point there, here. I can rise negative two, run one, there's a point there. So those are all points on my line, parallel line, these points, let me put them in black. Let's put them in black. So these are all points on that parallel line. Put them, putting them in black. That's when I write negative two, run one. All right. Now watch me now. Instead of rising negative two and running one, I get in all these little mini points. These little mini right, mini jumps. I can just use the same half or the same negative two and get a big jump. So instead of using that, my gradient, which is minus two over one, I can maybe go, let me see, two, four, six, eight, I can go maybe go minus 10 over five. Gotta see equal negative two, you know. But that's standard. So I write it better. Can go minus 10 over 5. That means that I'm going to rise negative 10, run 5. So let's do it. Let's do it now. I'll show you now. I'm going to use a different color. Let's use this is a different color for that. Let's use the blue and show you or the purple. So in that case, I would rise negative 10. Watch this now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's rise negative 10, you know. That's 10 down. Teacher, that's 10 down. Negative 10. And then I'm gonna run five now. One, two, three, four, five. See, I end up back at that point anyway. So instead of getting all these points in the middle. I could always make that one big run, one big rise, and one big run using a grid Sir. that is still equal to negative. Yeah? So yes. I remember the group was asking if she can still join because she just reached on. Yeah, man. And join, man. No problem. So see it here. So I just draw my line through now. And that's my parallel line. Let's see if we can try it straight. Uh, need, a, need a ruler up. In parallel. Now, if I wanted, I could also go the other way with the line. Remember, this line is supposed to pass through 10 up here. So, you know. so let's see if we're going the other way. If we're going the other way, I could write my gradient which is minus two as two over negative one. If I'm used to like, still equal negative two, you know, this still equal negative two, you know. So not, like I've changed my gradient, this still equal negative two. So the, what this means is that I'm gonna rise two, run negative one. Just that I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. So if I go back to the green and show that, it means that I'm going to rise to, I mean, from P now, I'm starting at P again. I'm going to rise to, go up to now. Run negative one means now you go back one. And so you're going to end up right there. Right here, that's a point on the line. If I continue, rise negative, rise, rise two again, rise two, so you go up two. And run negative one means you go back one. Sure. So it means that that point, yeah. How do we know how much of them to do? That point is on the line. Huh? How do we know how much of the rise and runs to draw? I just tell you, you can just do one alone. I just showed you, you know, not paying attention, you know. I just tell you, you can just do one alone. You can just do from here to here using a big rise and a big run there and done. I'm just showing you. Oh, oh, I just, 
This is just to show you, make you understand that gradient is how you rise and rise. You don't have to do so many. You could just do one year or so. One big rise, one big run and do you so. I don't bother with them and I mean, I just said it. You wouldn't bother to with these in the middle. So you could do one big rise and one big, it's a line of joint. The draw line, you only need two points. But I'm just going through the step-by-step -step thing to show you how you can get the various points. That answers the question. I want you to listen, you know. Don't just, if, if you listen what I'm saying, you know, because what you asked me, I answered it already, you know. What you asked me, I answered it already. I said they could just make one big run, one big rise, and one big run, and just get two points. And then these in the middle would be relevant. You would need them. Because you would have this point and this point. If you just use a grain of 10 over 5, negative 10 over 5. They will have this point and this point alone and just draw the line same way. And you will need all them other ones in the middle. But you have to listen, guys. You have to listen. Don't just watch. Listen. I'm speaking as well. I'm demonstrating and I'm also speaking. Don't make, don't make because I get loud and just tap off your stand. You know? Sometimes I get loud so that it rivet in your brain. Right? So my getting loud, don't take it as an offense. Right? That is how I, that is how I work. So still ask your questions, because I know that you understand now that you can just make one big jump, one big rise and one big run. Right? I just show you all these also illustrate the point. Right? So we could do the last one. All right. So last one, I could just rise to again, run negative one. And that point is on the line. So it's really a good question. Still, anything about it. I'm basically thinking we don't need to do so many of them. You don't, do any. you don't need to do all of them at all. I just need two of them. So instead of doing all of those rise and runs, let me answer that question again. So it'll be, it be um, two, four, six. Instead of doing, instead of doing, teacher, I'm going to answer your question now again. Instead of doing that big, when we will a run and make a rise, I could have gone and used gradient equals minus, equals two over minus one. 2 over minus 1, and we do instead 6 over minus 3. So I make one big jump. So instead of doing all them little run and rise, I could just make one big jump. So I could go, all right, I'm going to rise 6. Let me use the purple again. Rise 6 and run negative 3. So see it here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Run negative 3 now. 1, 2, 3. So I would have gone from this point straight to this point and these would not be necessary these would not be necessary right so that's that answers the question again so and my line would continue back like this so i did this part up here now just to show that you can also go in the opposite direction by writing the gradient put the negative on the top switch on the negative then and the positive in the grid. So you could get the line going back this way. Right? So if something you're doing a graph and you can't go forward on the graph because the graph finish, you can't go backwards, you can't go the other way. Right? So that's that. All right. And, and the important thing with this is that you realize that this line was actually, this line, remember, this line, remember, is y equals minus 2x plus 10. And it actually is correct because I cut the y axis there at 10, which is what it's supposed to be. Cut the y axis at 10. All right. Now, the thing about it you now is that I'm going to do the other one. Um, do I erase these and do the other one? Let me erase these and do the other line. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave the A, B. So, what I go so far with this, I'm going to erase the, 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 the um, I'm going to erase the, 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 this parallel line. All right. All right, let, me, let me erase what is not relevant. So I'm going to erase the jumps that we did. I'm going to erase these. All right. So I'm just leave the line. Let me erase these. I don't want the diagram to be too complicated. All right. Good. So that's it. All right. And let me just show the one big run. I, mean, yeah, I think you're outside. Right? I think you're outside. Let me do the let me do the the, the, the thing I line now the, the the perpendicular line. Let's use a different color for the perpendicular line. 
let's say we're using the purple for the purple nickel line. So the purple nickel line now, see it here? Purple nickel line we're doing now, right here. Purple nickel line. Purple nickel line started at the point, negative three, negative two. And some persons got the point wrong. Some persons put the point here. That is negative two, negative three. Remember, if it is negative three, negative two, you come back to negative three right here, and then you go down to negative two. So that is where it is supposed to be. So some persons put that point wrong, right? More than one person, actually. So careful these things. So this is where the point would be. Negative three, negative two. So that would be a Q point. That is a Q. And then from there now, I'm gonna apply a gradient of half. So let's do it over here now. Remember, the perpendicular line. Perpendicular line um, passing through Q minus three minus two, that gradient was a half. So based on the question that the young man asked me, instead of doing those like a mini drum, mini rise and mini runs, you can do so one big rise and one big run with equal half, see me? Half, we can do for half. We can do for half. I think I'm not messing up. We can do um, four over eight, still a half. So we can rise four, run eight. You can do look at rise one, run two. Now look, from Q, rise one, run two, you get that. 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 You can do that you know, and get all those points you now. As he said, why do all of those? You can just go one big four rise and one big eight run up. One, two, three, four, and then run eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You get that point there. Right? And we can go the other direction as well. Look, the gradient of a half. Let's try this properly. But I can see clearly the gradient of a half is actually the same as minus one over minus two. So in that case, rise negative one, run negative two. Right? So rise negative one, may go down one. So rise, and instead of we can go one, two, three. So instead of that, we could actually go, we could actually go and go minus three, minus six. That is still a half. So this would mean rise, negative three, and run negative six to draw that line, right? So we could rise negative, uh, negative three, look, starting at the same point Q. Rise negative three, one, two, three, Run negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That point is on the same line. So let me draw the line now. What is now? Let me draw the line now. So I'm drawing the line now using my ruler. So like that. No, that's wrong. Let's try it properly. And then I continue like that. It's my line. Right. So this line now was the the y equals half x minus half. What do we know about this line? It's supposed to cut the y-axis at minus half, not half, minus half. It's supposed to cut the y-axis at minus half. Right? Minus half. That's the y-axis intercept, minus half. And you can check it here. You can check it here. You cut the y-axis at minus half. That's minus half you now right here. I'm marking it now. That's minus half right here. You cut the y-axis because right here is minus one. It's minus one. You know. So you actually cut the y-axis at minus half for two. 
So you know that it's right, you know that the graph right. right? And it has a gradient of half. All right, so that was that class. You can have spent a good bit of time on it because I want everybody to understand that. All right, and get it good. We're going to have to linear inequalities. We're going to do part of it today. Inequalities. We're going to do part of it today. And the other part. Are there any questions on this? What are you this? But good. I encourage you, those who didn't do it, to go and do it again. Go and do it over by yourself. Minus 2x plus 10, that is this line. All right? Minus 2x plus 10, that is that line. All right. So, remember about these little markings. These, these markings. Those are the rise and the run. Can't take them off. That's the line. Rise and the run was just to show you how you get it. Those are the lines. Rise and the run was just to show you rise and run to get from point to point. It's a very powerful way to draw a line. If you have the point, if you have a point and the gradient. Gradient is how you rise and run from one point to another point. All right. That is that. Let's move on. All right. So we're doing now. We're doing now. Um... We are doing, let's go again. We are doing the topic of, back to this. Wrong side, come up in now. Wrong side, wrong thing. Let me see if it is here. Um, I've lost it. Let's find it back. Let's find it back. I had it there. Inequality. This one. Good. So this is where we're at now, guys. Inequalities, and in particular, linear inequalities. Inequalities and inequation. Uh, let's go straight into it. So what are inequalities? Inequalities are mathematical statements showing one quantity that is either greater or less than another quantity. So that's when the inequality sign comes into play. All right, that's what this is about. And we have to be able to represent these graphically and also on number lines. Very easy. So I'm going to do some of the basics today and then we'll pick it up back tomorrow. All right. All right. So there are four basic there are four basic inequalities, and I see people in prep school and primary school learning them and understanding them. So that is that means less than, right? That's a less than sign. So whatever is on the left is less than whatever is on the right. So that means is less than. That one means is greater than. So I know everybody knows this, right? That one means is less than or equal to. It means the thing on the left is either less than or it is equal to the thing on the right of that sign. That one is greater than or equal to. So those are the four inequality signs. And we're going to bring these now to coordinate geometry. So it's almost like we're doing coordinate geometry now, but instead of equal, we're working with the inequalities now. So the equal or the equal geometry, in particular with lines, it's talking about the issue is, is basically equation for the line itself. The inequality now will be speaking about regions above the line or below the line. All right, but we're gonna get to that shortly. All right, so those statements. First one means X is less than two. The second one means X is greater than four. The third one is, P is less than or equal to seven. And the fourth one is Q is greater than or equal to 10. I know everybody good with that, right? So I'm just gonna move on. This is like the basics. Everybody good with that. Now there's one important thing before we even get into it to remember. And it's important for you to remember this right through your life. You know, when you're solving equations, you can divide or multiply by a negative number, right? And, and, and you still have the equation. For example, if you have an equation like 
For example, you have an equation like, say, you have 2x plus 5, 2x plus 5 equals, um, or let's, let's use a number like this then. Let's say 2x plus 6. So you have 2x plus 6 equals, so 4. And you can divide this through, all right, let me make it minus. All right, I just want to illustrate something to you. So use some value that really makes sense. So, so we have, so we have um, six minus x equals three. All right, to get this to become a positive, I can decide to multiply by a negative one. And then all that could happen is that this will become negative six, this will become positive x, and this will become negative three. No problem. When you have inequality, as is the case down here, there's one additional thing you have to do, remember to do when you multiply by a negative number or divide by a negative number for that matter. You have to remember to reverse the inequality sign. You have to remember to reverse the inequality sign. This thing. The inequality sign must be reversed. All right. And let's look at an example of why that is so. Right. An example of why that is so is that we all know that 2 is greater than 0. We all know that 2 is greater than 0. But if we were to, if we were to multiply you now this inequality by a negative 1, right? this side will become negative 2, and this side will remain 0, such that we end up with this. But notice, the sign has to be reversed for this thing to remain true. It could not be that you're going to leave negative 2 greater than 0. Because everybody knows that negative 2 is not greater than 0. Negative 2 is actually less than 0. And we can try the same thing with actual numbers as well. We can try the same thing with numbers. Because, for example, if you have, we all know that 2 is greater than 1. Let's use 2 and 1, for example. If I multiply by a negative 1, I multiply by negative one. I'm going to get negative two on this side. I'm going to get negative one on this side. We well, can write that negative two is greater than negative one. That is not true. This will be incorrect. You have to reverse the inequality sign for it to be true, for the statement to be true. The sign has to be reversed. So that's what this is all about. When you have an inequality and you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to remember to reverse the inequality sign. There will be nothing there to help you. That is something that you have to have in your head. That is, that, that is something that you have to remember yourself. All right? And so um, if, if we're working with, even with letters like that, or, or algebraic expression, algebraic inequality like that, that says A is less than B. You don't know what the value of A is, and you don't know what the value of B is. Well, if A is less than B, and you have to multiply by a negative 1, Right, then what happens is that the negative a becomes greater than negative b because you have to reverse the inequality sign. This sign is reversed to that. So this becomes negative a, this becomes negative b. When you multiply by negative one, for the inequality to remain true, this s than sign becomes greater than. So it's something that you have to remember. I know you're going to make a couple of mistakes going down the line by not remembering them, but you will learn as we go. All right. So one of the things you have to be able to do, read and also draw, is inequality on a number line. Now they like to set this a lot, especially in, in fact, in multiple choice and on the paper too. In the multiple choice, they, do it, they, they like to give you number lines and ask you for the correct inequality, or sometimes they give you inequality and ask you for the correct number line. On the paper two, what they like to do is ask you to draw a number line. So you're doing an inequality question, you get the answer, and then I want you to represent your answer on a number line. All right. So this is best illustrated um, as an example of in terms of how you draw, put that represent an inequality on a number line. Best, best way to illustrate it is with examples. So this is the first example. That's a number line. Now, the critical thing to notice. Critical thing to notice is that the, this circle is on the one, 
right? So it means that the one is a critical value. And the next thing is that this arrow is pointing to the right, meaning that we want values to the right of the one, right? But one important thing is that the circle that is on the one is actually not shaded. It could have been shaded, you know, like that, you know, which will make a difference. But it is unshaded. It's so the unshaded circle means that this is not equal. The equal is not there. It's greater than alone. The unshaded circle on the one actually means that, that you don't want the one. You're starting from one, but you don't want the one. The one is not a value. So like you're starting from 1.0000001, something like that. You're starting from any value that is greater than one, but one is not included. I show that the one is not included. You leave the circle on the one unshaded. Right? And so basically then, this is the inequality for that number line. And this is how you actually write it. This is how you, know you write it. You write it like that. That means that in that number line there, with that diagram, the circle on the one not shaded and the arrow pointing to the right means X is greater than one. If you want, sometimes the question, sometimes six will ask for a solution set. A solution set basically just put in the solution, put in the, the number, the inequality in a solution set like that. These are your set brackets, this curly bracket and this curly bracket are your set brackets. And you put a statement, this means X is such that, X is such that. And it's just putting the same inequality in set brackets and putting the X is such that right there. That's all that it is, all right? If the question should say, write, write the solution set, which they do sometimes. And they will go on here now. The unshaded circle means that X is not equal to one, meaning the one is not included. One is not included. That's how we use an unshaded circle. All right, let's carry forward and let's do an example with a shaded circle now and see. So that's the one with a shaded circle. All right, let's analyze it now. First thing is that the circle is on the two. The circle is on the two. So the two is where we're starting. So the two is a critical value. This time, the arrow is pointing to the left. This way, meaning that we want values that are actually no less than two. And that's why we have the less than sign here, the less than sign there. But in this case, the circle on the two is now shaded. See, it is fully shaded. And that is why the equal is now, is now a part of the inequality. Up here, the equal is not a part of the inequality. It was just greater than. But now you're also including the two. And you include the two by shading the circle that is on the two all right so that's why you show that you also want the two so that's the difference between a shaded circle and an unshaded circle the shaded circle means you put the equal as a part of the inequality the unshaded circle means that you don't put the equal and the arrow to the left means that you want values that are less than two but also equal to two so for this one now we that means X is less than or equal to two. Again, if you want to show a solution set, then it's basically putting the same inequality in the set brackets. These are your set brackets, and then you write X is such that. That's if they ask for a solution set. So sometimes the question will ask for a solution, and you can just write this. But if they ask for a solution set, then you basically have to give them everything that I have right here. Right, you have to give them everything that I have right there. If they ask for the solution set. All right, and when you get the classwork, a question is gonna ask for a solution set. Then we continue now. Here, the shaded circle means that X is now equal to two. Up here, the unshaded circle means that X was not equal to one, right? And this now means that the two is included. So the shaded circle means that the two is included. All right, so that, I, I think that sort of, that, by that person supposed to understand what is happening here. I don't need to explain any further, except just to do a couple more examples, all right? So, um, next example is that. Let's look at that example now. So this one now, we have two unshaded circles, one on the negative three and one on the two, all right? So it's two things that mean here now. We want values that are greater than negative three, and at the same time, one values that are less than two, not including negative three, not including the two. Now, this is a situation where we use the word and. Why do we use the word and? 
You say x is greater than negative three and less than two because values in between here, values in between here will be satisfying both conditions simultaneously. In other words, a value in between there, like for example, the zero. Zero is at the same time less than two while also being at the same time greater than negative three. So in that case, we use the and. So this is an and situation. It's for a close, it's for an interval, not a close, but for an interval. All right? So it's an interval of values. So that is it. This means, I said the word and there now, that's why we use the word and. Because it is possible to be greater than negative three and less than two at the same time. All right? And then what happened now, that inequality can be read, can be written like this as one interval of values. Notice I have two less than signs in it. Right? So it's almost like I put an x value between them. Like I put an x value between the negative three, x, and the two. All right? So the negative three is less than x. Negative three is less than the x. At the same time, x is less than the two. Can read that way, All right? Or I like to say that it is between, x is between. The important thing to notice is that we actually have two less than signs here, here and here, very important, all right? That's when x is between two values, not including the values. And that's why I don't have an equal on this and I don't have an equal on that because the both circles are unshaded. Two circles are unshaded. All right. And then this inequality can be read both ways, can be read from the middle. So if you read it this way, it is saying x is greater than negative three. I can read it this way, which is saying x is less than two. So if you read it this half of it, it's saying x is less than x is greater than negative three. And if you read this half of it, it is saying x is less than two. Our inequality can be read both ways, you know. Let me show you. So for example, if we say three is greater than two, it can be read two ways. It is saying three is greater than two, but at the same time saying two is less than three. Saying the same thing, you know. The one point is closer to the two, so the two is less than the three. So the inequality can be read both ways. It can be read both ways. All right, so that is that solution set right there. All right, so. Another example, another example is that, now this is a situation of or, we have to use the word or now, why is that? Or, remember we want a, we want a value, we want a value down at this end, and we also want a value up at this end. So you cannot, you cannot have an x value down here and up here at the same time at the same time. Remember, in this case, you can have a value that is greater than the negative three and less than the two at the same time. But you cannot have a value that is less than negative one and at the same time greater than two. There's no value that is less than negative one and at the same time greater than two. So in this case, you have to use the word or. It is either less than the negative one or greater than the two. And this one will also have the equal to on this side. So you can have a half, half and half, and one half, open, one half close kind of interval like that. Well, that's not an interval. It's just two range of values, two separate range of values. And so you have to write two separate inequalities and use the word or for this one. All right. So in that case, that would be it. So you see the key word here now is or. So note the difference between the and and the or. This one was an and situation. This is an or situation. So it's either you are less than or e less than or equal to negative one, or x is greater than two. Values of x cannot be both at the same time. Cannot be both at the same time. There's no value of x that satisfy the two sides of the two sides of inequality at the same time. And even when you write in a solution, so you put a comma right here for the or, and you write two separate range of values. Two separate set of values, two separate inequalities. Here you could write as an interval, one continuous interval. But here you have to write two separate set of values to account for the account for the fact that it's two separate inequalities. Everybody understand that so far? Any questions there? Very good.
Wait, but okay, so far. No. Yeah. Wait, no, no, no. So for um the last one, sir, could we get one where it's X? Yeah. Um, like, like we don't get one that is greater than or less than that number, sir, or if it's strictly, we'd have to get both of them. You can get any combination. You can get any combination. Could have been that this was shady, for example. Hoping that's what you're asking me. Let's see. Could have gotten one. Oh. Could have gotten one where this is shaded as well. And they put the equal on this. See that? So you can get any combination. This, this is just a couple of examples that basically allows you know, to do any one. You could have gotten one where both of these shaded, like this. If both of these were shaded, then you have to put the equal on this and put the equal on that as well. And then the equal on this and the equal on that and the equal on this and the equal on that. You understand? So you can, they can give you any combination, any combination they can get. Just know that the unshaded circle means that the equal is not there. And the shaded circle means that the equal is there. Our, our pointing to the left means less than. Our pointing to the right, right means greater than. Simple as that. And then know the circle is on the number. The number is, is where you start. Number that circle is on is where the inequality starts. Right? Simple as that. All right? It trust me. It, it, it don't require no whole but deep thinking. Right? When you start to the examples, you'll, you'll see. All right? You can give it any combination, boss. Any combination you can get. And you'll be able to read all of them. If you just follow the basic principle, the unshaded circle means that the equal is not there. Arrow to the point to the right means greater than arrow to the left means less than. Shaded circle means that the equal is there as well. And the circle is placed on the value. The place on the value that you start. Right, so if you say something to me right now, I can draw the number line for it. All right, anything. All right, let us continue. Okay. So now we're going to talk about inequality in a graph. So this, this is what I go is inequality in a number line. Now we're talking about inequality in a graph. All right. No. Let me tell you straight out the back before you go any further. Inequality on a graph is used to identify a region that is either above a line or below a line. When you draw right an equation, for example, the y equals minus 2x plus 3 that we did, the AB line. That was talking about the line itself, the line AB, the question that we did a while ago. That's talking about the line itself. The equal is talking about the line itself. That's what the equal is for, the line itself. If I write y greater than minus 2x plus 3, I am no not talking about the line. This is A and this is B. I am no not talking about the line. Because I'm not talking about the line, I would have to put a broken line here. I'm not talking about regions above the line. So this inequality will refer to regions up here, above the line. That's what that means, you know. So inequality is talking about regions that are either above a line or below a line. You now, sometimes you also want to include the line. So I put an equal there. So I'm talking about the line or the equal and above the line. That's what this one means now. Right. So generally speaking, inequality on a graph is used to present regions above a line or regions below a line. And then there are certain rules that we need to pay attention to, to know whether we're talking about above the line or below the line. But the first thing to understand is that linear inequalities are used to represent regions above a line or below a line. And then we're going to look at now, when does it mean above the line? When does it mean below the line? That's what we're going to look at next. All right. And then there are certain other things, certain applications. We're going to deal with applications tomorrow. Today, I just wanted to understand certain things. All right. Boom. So, on a graph, inequalities are represented by a region that is either above or below a line, which represents 
the equal mark. So the line represents the equal mark. So it represents equal, greater than usually means above, less than usually means below, under certain specific conditions. I'm gonna tell you those conditions. The conditions under which greater means above and less than means below. Equal means the line itself. That's why when you draw the graph of the line, y equals minus 2x plus 3, you just draw a line itself. The equal means the line itself. Greater than would no mean above the line, less than would no mean below the line. Values above a line or below a line. I'm going to use some numbers and I can make it a little bit clearer for you as well. All right? So how do we draw the graph of a linear inequality? First thing you have to do is draw the line. That's the first thing you have to do is draw the line. Every linear inequality is related to a line. Start the line. Just like how the, the number line relates to a value on the line like the two, and you draw the circle on the two, it's the same thing. You draw the line first, which is the equal mark. Now that line is either, either drawn broken or unbroken. Just like how the circle on the number line is drawn unshaded or shaded, when you draw the graph of a linear inequality, you draw the line either broken or unbroken. No, you draw it broken when there's no equal there. And you draw it unbroken, meaning you draw it solid when there's an equal there. So basically, the broken line is equivalent to the unshaded circle that we had on the number line. The broken line is equivalent to the unshaded circle. And an unbroken or a solid line is equivalent to the shaded circle. All right, so this is what this is saying. If the equal to is included, the line is drawn unbroken or solid, draw a solid line. An unbroken line means that the line is included. Just like the shaded circle means that the, point, the value on the number line is included. The, 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 the unbroken line means that the equal to is included, the solid line, unbroken or solid line. So for example, if I draw an inequality for those two, I would have to draw solid lines for those two because the equal is included for both of them. All right. If the equal to is not included, then the line is drawn broken. If the equal to is not included, then the line is drawn broken. If the equal to is not included, it means that I don't want the line. I only want the region above the line or the region below the line. I don't want the line itself. To show that I don't want the line itself, I draw the line broken. And that is when you have an inequality like those two. The equal is not there. So if I'm drawing the graph, for x greater than three, I have to draw a broken line, x equals three. And I have to draw, if I'm doing for y less than four, I'd have to draw a broken line, y equals four, to show that the line is not included. Let's continue. It's gonna, this, it's gonna get easier and easier as we go. All right? The next thing we do, we mark the region that we want. So generally speaking, greater than means above the line, less than means below. So we draw the line first to show the equal mark, and whether I draw the line broken or unbroken, depending on whether the equal is there or not. The next thing we do, we mark the region that we want. Mark it usually by shading, right? So once the line is drawn, the required side of the line, above for greater than, below for less than, under certain conditions. And you indicate those regions in some way. Most times you indicate it by shading. Shading is what they normally use indicate the region that you want, all right? All right, so let's do an example. So let's say I want to draw the line x greater than or equal to three. The first thing I want to do is what that line means. Now, when you're gonna draw a graph of an inequality, one of the first words I want you to think about is this word, either above or below. Remember, you know, inequality is about being above a line or below a line, below. One of those two words is the first thing you have to you have to see, you have to think about. Do I want the region above a line or do I want the region below a line? In this example, I want the region above. Why? Because of the greater than, greater than. So I want the region above the line. The next thing is whether the line is broken or unbroken. In this example, because the equal is there, this equal part is there. The line is gonna be drawn unbroken or solid. 
since instead of saying unbroken, you can say you draw a solid line. Right? You can say you draw a solid line. So you want to use the word unbroken or solid. And the line that you're drawing is the one that's associated with this inequality. The line that's associated with the inequality, x greater than or equal to 3 is actually line x equals 3. x equals 3. You know, remember in the last class when we did um when we did um the last slide when we did quantum geometry we spoke about equations of the form x we spoke about equations of the form um spoke about equations of the form x equals a number or y equals a number remember that I would say x equals a number are vertical lines y equals a number are horizontal lines so this would be a vertical line because x equals a number. All right, so the first thing I want to do is always say what the inequality means. So above is the first word because of the greater than. Unbroken line you want because of the equal. And the line associated with that inequality is line x equals 3. So this is how we do it now. This is how we do it. First, we're going to put the graph. First thing we're going to do is draw the line. The line that you're drawing is x equals 3. And you're going to draw it unbroken. Draw the line x equals 3, and that's the line. After you draw the line x equals 3, you're going to always label the line with the equal sign, because the, e the line is an equal mark. So that's the next thing you do every time. So whether you draw a solid line or you draw a broken line, you still label the line with the equal sign. By drawing it broken, you would know that you don't want the line, but still label the line with the equal sign. So always label the line with the equal sign. And that's it. So the line is x equals 3. Then, no, you want the region that is greater. x values are greater than 3. You know, clearly, x values are greater than 3 to the right of that line. So you mark the region that of the, on the line. So in this case, you're going to the right of the line. So that is the inequality for that. That is the graph of that inequality. All right, let me do an example for you asking a question. We'll do another example for you asking a question. All right? Let me finish the examples. And see if you understand by the time we finish the examples. All right, let's go. It's very simple and straightforward. Now, trust me. Next example we're going to do, you know, is y less than 8. Remember, to draw the line y, to draw the graph of the inequality y less than 8 on a graph, the first word out of your mouth is whether you want above or below. So look at the inequality that you have. Since the inequality is a less than, since the inequality is a less than, it means Less than means below, because the y over here is positive, all right? Less than means below. I'm gonna split, I'm gonna talk about more about that, but this time less than means below. So the first thing you say is either below or above the line. The next thing you want to know is if your line is broken or unbroken. So, because the equal is not there, the equal is not there on the inequality, the line now is drawn broken, broken line. And then know the line that you're going to draw is the one that is associated with this inequality. The line associated with that inequality is the line y equals 8. See it here? You're going to draw the line y equals 8. And y equals 8 is a horizontal line passing through 8 right here. Horizontal line passing through 8. And that's what you do. Just as you're going to draw it broken. See it here? That's what you do next. Draw the broken line y equals 8. That's it. And then you always label the line with the equal sign. So whether you draw the line solid or broken, you still label the line y equals 8, because that is the equal mark. So label the line with the equal sign. So the line is y equals 8. Then the less than no means that you want region below the line. You want y values that are below the line, y values that are less than 8. So that must be the region below the line. Under there, y values will be less than 8. So that's an inequality. That's a graph for that inequality, you know, right there. Simple as that. So far, so good, guys. So far, so good. Excuse, excuse me, sir. Yeah. yeah. So when, the, when it's greater than, it goes across. When it's less than, it goes above. No, greater than greater than really means you want values more than three. You know? So for example, for for example, this one up at the top. It means that you want values that are greater than three. 
But good X values are greater than three out here. See me that you want out there. For this one, you want values that are less than eight. You want where y values are less than eight. Clearly, y values are less than eight down here. As simple as that. It's not rocket scientist, scientist. It, it, it commonsensical almost. So don't think of it too difficult. That's the problem with, with, with the math sometimes, you know. Sometimes we overthink it. It's simple. You want values of x. You want where the values of x are greater than three. Over here, values of x are greater than three on that side. That's what you want. And you want where the values of y are less than eight. So you want down here, so values of y are less than eight down here. They go into little, little technicalities now, right? Like for example, the equal is not there. So show that you don't want the line, you draw the line broken. You draw a broken line. Up here, the equal is there. So you want the line as well. So you draw the line solid. Draw the line solid. So you want the line. So in this example up here, you want the line itself for the equal. So you draw it solid to show that you want the line itself. We also want the region that is great, where x values are greater than three over here. So that's why you do that. But the example down here, you don't want the line because the equal is not there. You don't want the line. So to show that you don't want the line, you draw a broken line. A broken line means that you don't want the line. So like when we did the number line a while ago. So like when we did the number line on the first page. I say you want two. You put an unshaded circle on the two pointing to the right. The unshaded circle means that you don't want the two. So this means x is just greater than alone than two. If you want the two included, we shade the circle. I'm going to put the equal like that. So it's similar. So what happened? This broken line, let me show you. The broken line is equivalent to an unshaded circle. A solid line is equivalent to a shaded circle. That's a similarity between, and this is for a graph. This is for a number line. This is for a graph. This is for a number line. So the similarity is a mathematical way of indicating the information that you want that, in, that you want to show. And that's how they do it. That's how you indicate the information that you want to show. That's a standard way of doing it. So anybody in the world who just pick up the graph here and look at it, them know say the line x not equal eight. Them know because you draw the line broken. So x, y, not x, y I mean, y not equal eight. Y is only less than eight. Anybody who pick up this graph and look at it. Anybody in the world who pick up this. No, say x equals three, x can be three, or x can be greater than three. So x, x, if you want to write the values, and x are integer values, you can write x like this. X, x can be three, x can be equal to, let me write it, as I said. For, for this one, I can write it like this. x equals, start at three. Three can be four, can be five, can be six. Oh, no, 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 no. If x are integer values. For this one, for this one, y, y will be equal to, if I write the right values, y can be, can I put 8 in you know, Can be 7. If I interval, it can be 6, can be 5, can be 4, can be 3, all the way down. That's what that one means. If I use in whole number values. So this one, the 3 is included because the line is solid. This one, eight is not there. Notice the eight is not there because it's only less than eight you want. It's simple. All right, so let's move on. Let us move on. That answers the question? That answers the question, young yes, man? Sir. All right. Yes, sir. Trust me, Trust me. Not, not, not complicated. Let's look at this one now. This one now. So this one now is a region between one. This one now is, a, is between one and seven, right? Simple. You're between one and seven. You don't want the one because the equal is not there. But you want the seven because the equal is there. And you're going between two vertical. You're going between x equals one and between x equals seven. You're going between them, between x equals one and seven. So this, when you draw the line of x equals seven, you draw it solid. I mean, say so you want that one. When you draw the line of x equals one, you draw it broken. I don't want the one. And you want the region between them. So start x equals one is a vertical line and y x equals seven also is a vertical line. But this one has to be drawn broken. And so you don't draw, not drawing it solid. So let's look at it. 
It's, trust me, it's simple. It is very simple, not complicated at all. So basically, that one means that you want the region between the broken line x equals 1 and the unbroken line x equals 7. So you don't want the line, you don't want the x equal, you don't want x to be equal to 1. So to show that you don't want x to be equal to 1, you draw a broken line. And to show that you want x equals 7, x equals 7 are, solid, are valid values, you draw a solid unbroken line. That's it. x equal 1 and x equals 7 between them. The one you draw it broken, the same you draw it solid. See it? That's, the that's a graph for that inequality right there. Let's look at another one. No one y value between negative two and three. But we're including the negative two and we're also including the three. So remember now, this now is y, you want between y equals two, you want between y equals two, y equals negative two. You're gonna draw that one solid as a horizontal line. And you also want y equals three, that's also a horizontal line. And you want between them, you want between them, between the two of them, between them. See, the Y is between them, the Y is between that and that. Right? So you're going between two horizontal lines and two of them solid. So you draw the two lines horizontally and then share the region between them and draw the two of them solid. Right? That's it. So basically, it means between the unbroken line Y equals negative two and the unbroken line Y equals three. That's it. Y equals three is one at the top. Y equals two is one at the bottom, and you want the region between them. And the two lines are included, so you draw them solid. You see that? So for, ex for example, uh, let me just write, if, I, if, 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 they, if, they, if these values were a whole number of values, right? Or, yeah, let's say they were a whole number of values, integer values, right? Let's say they were integer values. If I'm doing this set, you know, set for that one, then X would be equal to, if I was using integer values, I could not include the one. I would have to start at two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven. If I was in, if they were whole numbers, they don't have to be whole numbers in that. Maybe 2.1 and 2.5 and 2.8 and so forth, valid enough. That's what that means, you know. But if I was just using whole numbers, that's what it would be. But this one, if I was doing this one, then Y would be, we we'll start at negative two down here and go all the way up to three and include in all of them. Right? So it will be negative two, then negative one, then zero, then one, then two, then three. That will be my values. If y were whole number values, that would be it. All right? That would be it. Good? So far, so good? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, good. So that's linear inequalities on a graph. All right, so we're going to put it all together now. So that's doing one line at a time and another line at a time. So you're not going to give you no one, one line to do. I'm going to give you a combination of lines to represent at the same time on a graph, which we call simultaneous linear inequality. Before we get into that, we want to look at when the greater than means above and so forth, right? Let's deal with that first. All right, so graph of linear inequality. So this is it. Now, the linear inequality must be written such that the coefficient of the y is positive on the left-hand side of the inequality before the required region above or below the line can be correctly identified. Now, let me tell you what this means. It means that if you have an inequality, right? If you have an inequality, um, inequality expression, right? All it is saying is that you want the y value, anything with the y value over this side. And so the inequality sign is here, either less than or greater than. All right. You want the y value over this side to be a positive y value, positive y value. That's what you want. So when the y value on the left side of the inequality is positive, this less than means below. It means below. And then the y value on the right side of the inequality is positive, then greater than means above. Simple as that. So you're always looking to see if your y value is on the left side of inequality and if it is positive. So that's the first thing you want to observe. Because I'm talking about linear, no, I'm talking about the lines, no, 
gradient lines, y equals mx plus c lines. No, you know. I'm not talking about simple lines that x c equal and y equal anymore. I'm not talking about those lines. I'm talking about lines with the x and the y in it at the same time. So we're talking about slope lines. Lines that we dealt with a while ago were either vertical alone or horizontal alone. We're talking about lines shaping like that or sloping like that now. And those lines will have both x and y in them. So those lines can be written in the form y equals mx plus c. All I'm saying to you is that you want the y value on the left side to be positive. When y value on the left side is positive, less than means you want below the line, greater than means you want above the line. I illustrated some, some, some numbers just now. All right. So for example, if you have y less than 2x plus 5, the y over on the left side, and side here is negative, is positive, sorry. The y over on the left hand side is positive. So the less than means below the line. And because the equal is not there, it means that I want a broken line. And the line that's associated with that, in, that, that inequality is the line y equals 2x plus 5. All that is all that happens is that I change the inequality sign to an equal sign to know which line is associated with it. So it means that I'm going to draw this line. I'm going to draw it broken, and then I'm going to shade below it. That's all that inequality means. I'm going to do some examples soon. But we have to understand what this means in terms of this statement. First word, first word, as I said, must always be either above or below. Since this is a less than, and y over here is positive, it means below. Once y over here is positive, once the y value over this side, over this side here, is a positive y value, the less than means below. All right, let's look at another example. Again, the y value over here is positive. Right? The y value over here is a positive y value. So less than means below again, see there? This time the line is drawn unbroken or solid because the equal is there. The equal is there. The equal, let's see the equal there, is there. And then the line that you're drawing now, the one associated with the inequality is like you're writing about the same thing but instead of putting the inequality, you put the equal sign. Put the equal sign. That's the line associated with it, with the inequality. So for this one, I would draw, I want the line 3y plus x equals 3. I'm going to draw it solid or unbroken, and then I'm going to shade below the line because over here, the y is a positive y value. It's a positive y value. Let's look at another example. For that one again, 2y greater than negative 5x. Again, the y over here on the left side is positive. The y value on the left side is positive. Therefore, therefore, my greater than means above. I want above the line. The equal is not there, and so I want a broken line because there's no equal there, no equal sign there. And then the line that's associated with inequality is the same expression but instead now I put the equal right there instead of the inequality that was there and that's it so to draw this inequality I have to draw this line first draw it broken and then I'm going to shade above it all right let's do, go again next example is that one same thing again same consideration. Look where the Y is and look if it's positive on the left side. See there, sir, the Y over, yeah? Sir, a, a greater than the less than sign, then we mean um, greater than or less than or equal to them, they um, always have unbroken line. Uh, look, if we have that, that means broken because there's no equal there. If we have this, that means broken. God is no equal there. If we have this, that means unbroken or solid. God the equal is there. If we have this, this means unbroken. Because the equal is there. Now, in addition to this mean, in addition to this meaning broken, it also means above. This also means above. Quite greater than means above. This one means below. Quite less than means below. This one means above. Because it's greater than. 
and this one means below. So generally speaking, greater than means above, less than means below. If the equal is not there, you draw a broken line. If the equal is there, you draw a solid, you draw an unbroken line. Simple as that. Good? That answers it? Yes, sir. All right. I'll do some examples and you'll see it in action. And I'll just go through. You can always go back through the notes, watch part of the video, and you'll see, right? I'll do some examples. Everything come clear, clear, clear with the example. So let's go back to this. Again, now remember, greater than means above when the y over on the left side is positive. So the y value here, it is positive. So because the y value on the left side here is positive, this y value over here is positive. This greater than now means above. And because the equal is there, I want an unbroken line. The equal means that you also want the line. So when you want the line, you draw the line unbroken, you draw it solid. And then the line that you draw, is the one that is associated with this inequality, which is this line. All you have done, you replace the inequality sign with an equal sign. All right, we're gonna do. We're gonna demonstrate it just now. How you do it? Right. I just want you to understand greater than and less than before we continue. All right. Look at the next example now. Bam. In this example now, the y over on the left side is negative. Look at it you now. The y over here now is negative. So because the y over there is negative, this less than don't mean less, don't mean below anymore. Not below, it don't mean below anymore. Because the y over here is now negative. And we can prove it. We can prove it by changing the inequality and multiply the inequality by a negative one. But the very first slide, what did we say? We said, if you multiply inequality by a negative one, you have to reverse the inequality sign, right? That's what we said, you know. So if I take this inequality and multiply it by a negative one, multiply it by a negative one, let me try it better. If I take this inequality right here, this inequality, and I multiply it by a negative one, multiply it by a negative one, it's gonna become this. That's what it becomes, you know. It becomes that. That's what you get. All right? And what do you notice now? The x becomes minus x. The minus y becomes positive y. The less than sign is reversed and become greater than. And the four becomes negative four. Now, on this one now, on this one now, it is a different color. And this one now, because the y over here now is positive, this means that it's really above an e because greater than means it's above. See? It's the same inequality now, but we just adjust it to make the y positive, yes? Um, when I get um, what did I say? equation, it's an inequality. Um, uh, when I get um, in inequality um work out like that sir yeah yeah you have to go yeah you're gonna change it to um let's see, let's see. Right, let, me, let me answer what i think you're asking remember you know the rule that we're using is what we're looking at right here you know is what does greater than mean and what does less than mean and when it means no generally speaking greater than means above Greater than means greater than means something above something else, you know. So greater than generally means above. But all I'm saying to you, yes. it means above when the y is positive, when you have a positive y value on the left side of the inequality. That's all I'm saying, you know. Because if the y on the left side is negative, it don't mean above anymore. Same one. This one means below. Less than means below. Less than means below. When the y is positive, when you have positive y value on the left side of the inequality. So if you look at this example down here that we're looking at now, all of these straightforward because all the y value then positive up here. So, so the less than a means below. The less than a means below. The greater than a means above. And the greater than a means above. So those straightforward because the y positive. All of these the y positive on the left side. For this one, if you look at the left side, 
the why negatives are negative why they have so because the why negative the less than sign here don't mean below any more the less than means below only when the y positive on the left side of the inequality right i'm going to use a graph and explain to you exactly why that is so just now right so we have to so we're adjusting this now to show you know that the less than actually means above in this case i'm adjusting it how do, how, how do i make the adjustment i multiply this inequality by a negative one so that the y becomes positive i want the y to become positive so i multiply by the minus one and the y becomes positive so when i multiply by the minus one i get that and i multiply by a minus one i get this all right yes sir and for this one now the y now is positive on the left side the y over here now is positive. I will see that we have a greater than sign. So what was a less than sign is now a greater than sign. So this is really above. And I'm saying to you, if on this one, look at it now. If, so this means above, you know. This actually means above, you know. But if we just, if we just look at the inequality alone, without looking at the y, we would have gone below. Because I would have used, would have focused on the less than and use below where the below would be wrong. The below is wrong this time because the y is negative over there. The y has to be positive. So I made the adjustment to make the y positive and show you that this inequality really is a is a above one, not below. All right. So the important thing is that you must always look for where the y first, but look for the y value first. Before you even look at the inequality, look at where the y is. I make sure the y is positive on the left side of the inequality. If the y is positive on the left side, left side of the inequality, then greater than means above and less than means below. When the y value is positive on the left side. And you have, that's what you have to remember. That's a key thing to remember. All right? That's a key thing to remember. So that's it. Multiply by a negative one, we get that now. The y is now positive. The less than change to greater than. And that shows what the true meaning was. It really means above the unbroken line. That's what it really means. And so let's go and draw one now and see. And then when we draw it, I'm going to use some numbers and show you what is that mean with the numbers. All right. So let's go and draw one now. All right. So let's just let's, let's, let's use the graph. Let's just. um. Look which side of the graph I mean by above. And this is almost like common sense. Which part of the graph I mean by above and which part we mean by below. Because you always have to draw the line first. You know? So let's look at it. So if you're looking at this one first, let's look at this one first. Um, right, let's start looking at this one first. Let me use the marker. Let's start looking at this one first. Which part of that line is above and which part is below? Can just tell it obvious. It's very obvious. Up there, so it's above, and don't just so it's below. So, for example, let me give an example. Let me, give, let me write an example. So, if for example, I had, if for example, I had um, y, and it's a blue ink, erase all, and it's a blue ink. If, for example, I had y less than 2x plus 1, it means that I would share under here. That's what that means, you know. I would want below the line. All right? That's what that means. And if instead I had y greater than 2x, and that the 2x plus 1. It means that I would want up here, above there. That's what that means. So all I'm showing here now in this slide is which side of the line means above and which side of the line means below. So it's pretty straightforward. Which side of the line means above, which side. So if, that, if on this, on the second one, on the second one over here now, on this one now, on that one, Right? Up there, so it's, if it's for above, and under there is for below. 
And horizontal line one, clearly uh, up there is for above when you have a greater than sign. And down there is for below when you have a less than sign. And for a vertical line, above is to the right of a vertical line as a x equals um, x equals line. And down there is for below. So just to write them in, this one is like x equals a value. And this one is like y equals a value. This one is like y equals a value b. And this one is like y equals mx plus c. And this one again is like y equals mx plus c. All right. So that's where the above and the below me. That's, that's all that this is showing you. Right? So, so above and below. So if greater than, you can see clearly which side of the line means above. If the less than, you can clearly see which side of the line means below. All right. The only thing left to do now is examples and actually put it to put it into effect. So that's how we're gonna do this line. We're gonna draw that line on the graph. So the first thing we want to do to draw that line is what does it mean? Remember, the first word is either above or below. So you tell me now. This means above or below. We want to draw the graph of this inequality. Y less than 2x minus 2. We want to go above or below a line. Tell me. Would I want above or below? Below. Below. How oh, I know it's below? Because. How oh, I know it's below? Less than 2x. Not just less than. First thing you look for the y. The y on the left side is positive. Therefore, less positive. than means below. Right. When the y positive on the less than sign, the, the less than means below. That's what you have to look for. Good? And am I going to draw a broken line or an unbroken line? Am I going to draw a broken line? Huh? Yeah, draw a solid line. Why solid? So because he... Remember, no? no, I'm going to draw a broken line because the equal is not there. The equal is not a part of the inequality. Look, it's not this me having no. Oh, Lord. Look, the equal is not there. See there? There's no equal as a part of my inequality. My friend, stop right. She's um, hold on there. Oh, it's off. Okay. Didn't realize it was off. Right. The equal is not there. So I have to draw a broken line. That is not there. If I had this, I would draw an unbroken line. Let me erase it. Or draw a solid line if I had that. The equal means that I also want the line. So I have to show that I also want the line. I will draw a solid line. When I don't want the line, I draw it broken. And this is when it's either less than alone or greater than alone. For this one, is less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. For this one, this one. And this is for this one. So the equal is not there. There's no equal there. So I have to show that I don't want the line. I draw it broken. Because the equal is not there. There's no E. I want Y less than 2X plus. Y less than 2X minus 2. So I don't want equal. Equal is the line. Equal is not there. I don't want the line. To show that I don't want the line, I draw it broken. You get that? But understand that? When I don't want the line, okay, I have to draw it broken because there is no equal there. The fact that there is no equal there, it means that I don't want the line to be a part of my inequality. The line is just there like a starting point. So to show that it is just there as a starting point, but I don't really want the line, I draw the line broken. A broken line means that points on the line are not valid. The line is not a part of the inequality. It's not a part of the region that I want. Remember, you know, linear inequality is about 
showing a region above a line or below a line. Sometimes I also want the line. Sometimes I don't want the line. When I don't want the line, the equal is not there in the inequality. The equal part is not there. When I want the line, the equal is there. In this example, the equal is not there, meaning I don't want the line. I'm just going to draw a broken line to show where my region starts. That's all the broken line is there to do now, you know, to show me where we start. So let's go again. The Y on the left side is positive, so less than means I want below the line. The equal is not there, so I don't want the line. So I'm going to show that I don't like, want the line by drawing a broken line. And the line that I'm drawing is the one that is associated with this inequality. The line associated with this inequality is the line y equals 2x minus 2. But I'm going to draw it broken because I don't want the line. So I'm going to draw the line y equals 2x minus 2. I'm going to draw it broken. And then I'm going to share the region below the line. So let's go now. How do you draw the line y equals 2x minus 2? You have two, two ways to draw it. To draw it. You can use the gradient and the y-axis intercept, or you can use two points. So let's go. So that's what I'm going to draw first. See there? I'm going to draw below because of the less than. I'm going to draw a broken line because the equal is not there. And the line that I'm drawing is the line y equals 2x minus 2. And I'm going to draw it broken. All right? So how do we draw that line? We can plot two points, right? Draw the broken line. So one point is zero negative. To get another point, I can just give x a value, any random value. I can just put part of here and another and get another point. So this is one point to the y-axis that's it. Because the lines remember y equals mx plus the c value is negative two. So you pass through the point zero negative two. We know that. That is one, that's where it's value is zero, the work was negative two. So you need a second point, right? Or we could use the gradient. Look, we could use the gradient to know. The gradient is two, which is the same as two over one, two over one, two over one. Uh, which means rise two, run one. Just did it a while ago. So starting at here, this point, which is this point, we could rise to run one. No. Rise to, um, I don't want to mark the graph, in, but I don't want to know. But you can think about it. I'm going to put dots and show it. Let's put dots and show it. Right? Um, so I can rise to one. Two, run one. See there, that's a point on the line. Rise two again. One, two, run one. Rise two, run one. See there? Rise two, run one. What is it that? Rise two, run one. And so my line is like this. I have to draw it broken. See there? I draw a broken line like that. That's my line. And I draw it broken. And then I go to below it. So I share the region below it now. See there, below it. Share the region below it. And I have a label line with the equal sign. Y equals 2x minus 2. Well, let's, let's show it. It's on the slide, so let's do it. So another way to do it, as I said, now is to plot another point. Bam. See there, could put another point. I'll get that other point. I put 6 for the x value right here. Let's put 6 for the x value right here. But this x value I put six. All right. And so I get y equals two times six. No, it's not six, I give it it's four. It's four, I give it four, not six, four. So it's y equals two times four minus two. Two times four is eight, eight minus two is six. So we'll get the six here. So six. So it means that our point is four, six. So since the point is four, six, I can put on these two points on the graph, right? Two points. 
right, see them there? See them there now? See two, two points here. What can I say two points on the graph? See them? Right. Zero minus yes, two <clears throat> and four, six. Good. And then just use the ruler now and draw the line. And you draw it broken. So that's your line. And you make sure you draw it broken. And after you draw the line, I draw it broken. You still have to label the line with the equal sign because the line is the equal mark. By drawing the line broken, that is indicating that you don't want the line. You have indicated that you don't want the line by drawing it broken. So then, bam, you label the line with the equal sign next. See there? That's the line where it was 2x minus 2. So what do you do after that now? Shade the region below the line. You show it by shading. Mute the mic, please. So that's my inequality for that one. Region below the line, so I shade it there. That's the inequality for that line right there. I shade the region below the line. Now let me use a valley and show you now what I mean by that. What I mean by that now. Let me use some values and show you. So take a value, like for example, right here. Take a value, like for example, right here. So let, let's, look, let's look at that point. I want to show you now the y less than two. Show that the value. Let me show you the value now. Pay attention now. Everybody pay attention. Let's use the black to indicate it. Now take a point like right here, so in the shady region. That point is a point where x equals four, y equals four, don't it? So the y value is four at that point, right? Now the point on the graph right here, on the line right here, is actually y equals six. So at x equals four on the line, y is actually equal to six at that point. But in the shady region, the y value is less, you see? The y value is less in the shady region than on the line. So the line, the y value will be six. In the shady region, the y value is less than six, less than six, you see that? In the shady region, the y value is less than six. Because I want where the y value is less than it would be on the line. You understand, you understand that? You understand that? For the same x value of 4, I'm getting a y value that is, that is less than what it would be on the line. On the line, the y value would have been 6. I don't want where it is equal. I don't want where y is equal to 2x minus 2. Everywhere in the shady region, the y value would be less than 2x minus 2. The y value that I'm getting here, for example, is 6. It is less, it's 4. It is less than 6. You understand that? Look at the demonstration. Let me know if you understand. I'm trying to let you understand all the points yes, um, go. Yes, sir. Right? I'm right. I'm getting y in the shady region. I'm getting y values. That is less than what it would be on the line for a given x value. My y values are coming out less than it would be on the line for a given x value. Right? So let me show it again. This point right here, for example, this point is the point 4, 4. On the graph, the point is actually 4. Six. We get to the six by doing y equals two x minus two. Right here, I'm getting a value that is y the value is less than two x minus two. Okay, it is coming out less than six. This y value is less than six. So is this point. So is this one. So is this. all of them less than six. All of these values, the y value less than what it would be on the line. On the line. The y value would be six. All of these points under here, the y value is less than six. That's why all the points under here are valid below. That's why less than means below. You want y values that are less than what it would be on the line. On the line, the y value would be equal to two x minus six. Below the line, the y values are less than two x minus six. Get the picture? But I understand it better? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Let's do another example. Let's do another example. 
Look at this example now. So this example, I deliberately now give you one where the Y is negative on the left side. So you have to be careful and see it. See there? The Y negative. So because the Y is negative, you can't just run and jump and look at the left hand sign and say below. Below is wrong. Because the Y over here is negative. So it's not below, it actually means above now. To prove that it means above, I can change the inequality and make the Y positive. And then the inequality sign will have to become greater than by multiplying the inequality by a negative one. And we multiply the negative one. What we have to do? Remember to reverse the inequality sign. We pull that. I will put that on the very first slide. You know, that when you multiply inequality by a negative one, you have to reverse the inequality sign. That's why I'll put that on the very first slide. It is that important. And that's why we say greater than means above when the y is positive. Less than means below when the y is positive. So you have to check out the y on the left side first. And if I give you an inequality like this, 2x less than, I put y over there. So you can't use this as less than again. Why? Because the, the y is on the right side. You have to switch it around and write y greater than 2x. Because these two things is the same thing, you know. Two of them is the same thing, you know. Let me erase and write again. So if I write 2y, 2x, let me erase it. If I write 2x less than y, it is the same as saying y greater than 2x. This is the one that you're working with. This one means above. If you just run and focus on the less than, you might be saying below, which would be wrong. So the greater than means above when the y is on the left-hand side and positive. In this one, the y is on the right-hand side. So the less than don't mean below anymore. Get the picture? Everything important. That's why we have to put the conditions where the Y is on the left side and it is positive. That is when greater than means above. And that is when less than means below. And I just showed you the, the, the example on the graph. When you practice more questions, you'll appreciate it even more. So I, a topic like this, have to practice. It's easy still enough. Believe me, it's easy. You're going to see that it's easy by the time. Tomorrow you see that it's getting easier and easier. Trust me. Right? So the reason I'll give this other example now is to emphasize the point. Don't just run and look on the inequality sign and say below. So if you look at the y value and it's negative, so less than don't mean below anymore. It no means above. And you can show that it means above by multiplying through by the negative one and get the y value to become positive when you multiply by a negative one. All right. So let's go, bam, see there? One pair two by negative one, this inequality now becomes this. Right? This inequality now becomes that inequality. I know that the y over here is positive. We know about greater than car reverse sign, so it really means below, it really means above. It's really, really above the want. It's really above the want all the time. Because the y over here is positive. So now that we have that, you can go ahead now and write the meaning of that. We're working with the second one now. Forget about the first one. Right? Forget about the first one. Show with this. Show with that. Work with that. Because that one has a Y positive on the left side. So we know that that is the one we're working with now. It's the same inequality just rearranging a form that we want to work with, that we understand better. Because the Y positive. So we now know that the greater than means above. So for this one, we want above. We also want a solid line. Why do we want a solid line? Because the equal is there. See the equal there? The equal is a part of the inequality. So we want an unbroken line. Right? Because the equal is there. So let's write what it means. See there? So sir, what it means. Yes? You can use the unbroken line when you're above. No. Use the unbroken line when is that a greater than a loan? Let me show you. First one, it's simply no. When it's greater than a loan, you use an unbroken line. Or when it's less than a loan, you use an unbroken line. That is when you use an unbroken line. But once you have the equal, you draw a solid line. Let me say that again. 
Let me say it again. Make sure I say the right thing. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. I don't know if I say the right thing. Forget what I just said. Let me say it over. You use a you, you when let me say it over. When you have a greater than a loan, you use a broken line. When you have a less than a loan, you use a broken line. If you have a greater than or equal to, you draw an unbroken solid line. If you have a less than or equal to, you draw an unbroken solid line. That get it? You understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Good. The, them two here yeah, mean that you don't want the line. You only draw the line broken to show where the region starts. To show where you where share the region starts. That's all it means there. In these two, you want the line as well. The line is no points on the line valid for these two. These two points on the line valid. These two points on the line not valid. You don't want the line. You don't really want the line. You just draw the line there broken to show where the region starts. This two down here, so now, you also want the line and the equal is there. The equal means that you also want the line. Just like when we did in the number line a while ago, we we'll draw a shaded circle. That means that you also want the value two. So for this one, you want greater than or equal to two. But for this one, if it's two and you draw an unshaded circle and arrow pointing to the right, this one is now X just greater than alone two. The unshaded circle means that you don't want the two. So it's a similar thing with the broken line. You don't want the line, but you have to show something to show where you start. So them similar. So the unshaded circle, this one, similar to this. And the one here up here so similar to that. Them similar. You get me? Better? Yes, sir. Good. So let us continue. All right, so we read the, 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 the thing I want. And all we need to do is draw the graph. So we're going to use two points and draw the graph. Now, when you have equations like this, a good way to draw that one quickly is to get a point where the x equals 0 first and work out the y value from the equation and get another point where the y equals 0 and work out the x value from the equation. Good? And then this point is going to give, give you a 0 y point and this second one is going to give you a, 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 a x value of 0 point. It's a good way to get points on this equation like that. Let me show you. So see it here now? Bam. First thing we know, we want above, unbroken or solid because the equal is there. And the line we're drawing is like the same inequality, but put that equal. So we're going to draw the line. So draw the line, we're going to use two points. Bam. Draw the line. I'm going to draw it unbroken. One, I give it an x value of zero. Let me work it out up here and show you now. So we have the line. This line we're drawing you now. This line. Let me show it up here. So we're drawing the line. Minus 5 plus 5y equals minus x. So first, I'm going to give it an x value of 0. x equals 0. So I put x equals 0. I'm going to get minus 5 plus 5y equals 0. But understand that? And then if we cure over the 5, if we cure over the 5, yes, and divide by 5, yeah? They can't get any value. I can't give it any value, but I'm telling you that friendly values to give it is x equals zero for one of them and y equals zero for the next one. Because x equals zero is going to be a point on the y-axis and y equals zero is going to be a point on the x-axis. These are easy values to give it, x-axis. These are friendly yes. values to use. X equals zero, y equals zero. Trying to be the easiest way possible. So yes to your question, we could give it any value that's, also, that's on the graph. But easy values to give it are x equals 0, y equals 0. Uh, yes, sir. And we'll use the graph, we'll use the equation. So the equation now, this equation now is going to tell us that the y value is 1. So this is going to lead us to a y value of 1. Let me write it below it. Let me write it below it because we need to do the next one. So this is going to tell us, this one is going to tell us that at that point, y value is 1, y equals 1. See there? That's what that is. So this is 1 point, 0, 1. All right? The next one, we're going to give it a y value of 0 now. So the same equation, we're going to give it a y value of 0. So if y equals 0, I'm putting it in the equation, I'm going to get 
negative five, negative five equals, no, ah, uh, let's go again. I'm gonna get negative five plus zero equals negative x. If we put y equals zero right there, so. You get me? And in this case, you see that the x equals five. See, so if multiply two by minus one, you see that the x equals five. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. See there now. You start. See there. When we put y equals zero, x work out to be five. The equation tells the x work out to be five. So these are two points that I can use. This one is on the y-axis. And this one is on the x-axis. See them there on the graph? I'm showing them on the graph now. See them there? See the two of them on the graph? Zero, one on the y-axis. Five, zero on the x-axis. Two easy points to get. Because zero, you put x equals zero, you get the y value easy. And you put y equals zero, you get the x value easy. One value on the y-axis, one value on the x-axis. Those are two points on that line. I'm going to draw the line. I'm going to draw it solid. Draw the line. That's it. I remember I want to shade above that line, so I'm going to label the line now. I'm going to label the line with the equal sign. So I label the line with the equal sign. Bam. See there? The line is minus 5 plus 5y five equals minus x. And I'm going to shade above the line. Shade the region above the line. See there? And that's my region. Above the line. But a good. And that's how you do one. It's yes, simple as that. That's how you do it. All right. Um, the next thing is to do simultaneous. And the simultaneous is when you're doing multiple lines at the same time. All right. But I'm going to actually start with the class tomorrow with this. Right, and just to show you quickly what happens. So you have those three inequalities which put all at one, all of them on one graph. So you don't shade yet. All right. So I'm going to start back tomorrow with this slide. So you do the first one and draw it. See there? I know that you want above that line, but you don't put, you don't mark it yet. You just put an arrow pointing above, as I have down here. See, put an arrow pointing above. But you're not going to shade it yet. All right, and you draw the second one. That's the second one. And you draw the second one. That's the second one. And again, you put the arrow pointing above. Don't shade anything yet. Just put the arrow pointing above. Mean that you want above that line. And the third one now is that one. That's a horizontal line. And you want below that line. So you draw that one as well. And again, you put the arrow pointing down. See here. And the way you want is a region that satisfies all three. One region that satisfies all three inequalities, which is inside their triangle. That triangle inside there satisfies all three inequalities at the same time. That's a simultaneous mean. Right? The common region that satisfies all three inequalities at the same time. And so we can share that region. And the beauty about these common regions, or the useful or the important thing about these common regions, is that the extreme points or the extreme values occur at the vertices. So the vertices are especially important. The vertices of a common region. And the vertices are the points where you go to work out maximum and minimum for anything that you're trying to find within the region. We're gonna deal with all of this tomorrow. I'm just giving a little quick look at it. All right? So if you wanna calculate, for example, in this example, we have, a, we have a P, so P might be profit, I want to calculate the value of P. I want to calculate the maximum or the minimum value of P. You have to go to the vertices to see which one of them give you the maximum or the minimum. The vertices. And I explain a little bit more why the vertices is where you get the maximum or minimum. Because the vertices are where you get the largest X values or the smallest X values in the common region for that common shade region. All right? And then... um. And then you go to the vertices where you do a calculation. So you do a calculation, for example, at the point A, which is 42. 
your calculation at the point B, which is 1.5, 4.2, and get the P value there. And you do a calculation at C, and you can know which one is the maximum and which one is the minimum. So the maximum is 45 at the point C, which is 9, 4.5. And the minimum is 20 at the point A, which is 4.2. So stuff like this you have to answer. And we're going to go on to linear programming. All right. And we're going to have a lot of fun with these things. So tomorrow, we'll continue. All right. We'll continue with this tomorrow. So we're going to stop it here for today. What I want you to do, guys, is to um, look back over the notes. I'm going to send the video as soon as we finish. And I want you to practice to draw these lines, these examples that we did. Let's go back over and, you know, practice drawing these examples that we did. Draw them yourself. All right, and share the region and so forth, right? But the meaning, right? But the meaning of the inequalities, these things, all right? These meanings and why the mean, why the list and means below and, you know, the equal is there, you draw it unbroken, I right? draw it solid. When the equal is not there, you draw it broken, right? Remember the unbroken, when the equal is not there, it means that you don't want the line. You don't want the region above the line or below the line. All right, so I just want to look back over these things, understand this part of it. I'm going to send the video, watch it over. All right, and then we we'll pick it up back tomorrow and have some fun. All right, guys, we're going to stop it here for today and pick it up. I'm going to continue tomorrow with the simultaneous linear inequalities tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Yes, sir. But good? Yes, sir. But good, sure. No, sure. I'm not so happy to me, you know. You're not so confident yet? No, sir. Not, not yet. No, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Confidence will come with the practice, man. Confidence will come with the practice. Believe me. When you start practicing the question and start getting them right, I'm going to say that it's a breeze. I guarantee you, by tomorrow evening, by Wednesday, by Wednesday, you'll be good. You'll be fine. We're finishing this topic this week, you know. Next week, Sunday, we're moving on to another topic. You know, that's how easy this topic is. You just don't know yet. That is very easy. So tomorrow, we'll take it a step further. And we're going to do a number of questions tomorrow. Okay, if you notice, there's just two more slides to finish the lesson. So tomorrow afternoon, we'll be doing a number of questions. I'm going to see how easy, easy this thing is. Believe me. Easy like cheese. All right, so don't worry, sir. I guarantee it's going to be very easy. All right? It just serves us sometimes. Sometimes it have to look a, look, look a little bit new. And then you practice and you learn the stuff. And then it becomes easier and easier. And you help yourself make it become even easier by practicing and do what, do what I tell you to do. But believe me, it's easy for you. It's easy. You just don't know it yet. But you're going to see it by Wednesday. That's how easy it is. Tomorrow you'll start seeing how easy it is. And you'll start preempting and know what I'm going to do next and stuff tomorrow. But we just have to just toil through the understanding of the minute details. And that's how I teach. I like to ensure that you get the minute, look of important details, like the greater than and the less than and the wire for the positive on this side. I will spend time on it and get those parts right. And then once we understand those parts of it, the rest of it just smooth sailing, trust me. So what we did so far is well, like the difficult part, toiling part. Once you understand that base, those basic things first, and then we're ready to start applying it to other things, you see how everything come together nicely. I'm going to have some fun with this topic. It's one of my favorite topics, actually, you know, this topic. One of my favorite topics, you know. So, yeah, we're going to have some fun. It's, it, it's easy. Trust me, it's easy. You just don't know it yet, but you'll know eventually. Starting tomorrow, you see. Just go back over what we did today. Make sure you understand the... The, the less than and the greater than what they mean. Um, remember the, the, the above and the below, but the line broken or unbroken. Let's go back over those things for me today. All right? And then tomorrow, no, we'll put it all together. Put it all together tomorrow. And you'll see. We're going to do some passport questions. By tomorrow, we'll, by tomorrow we'll be doing some passport questions. By Wednesday, we'll do more passport questions, and you'll be able to do a question for yourself and get it right. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. All right? Very good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, then. All right, then. Cool. So tomorrow we meet again. Remember, the time is 3 o'clock.
and I'll, I'll send a video for this one later so that um so that you can you can join the class all right okay guys bye Bye, 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 princess. Bye. bye. Okay, bye. All right, I'm going to end this channel for everybody now. Bye.